Hey guys, thanks again for coming in tonight. This is our second try. Hopefully it will work this time. Thanks for popping back in. So I am in my living room today instead of our normal relax and craft area, which is the dining room. Uh, we are going to pin baste the sparkly uh, hourglass quilt together tonight. It's out there on the couch there. I've pressed that and I've pressed the back. I have my basting pins ready. These are those curved safety pins that we talked about last night. I have my painter's tape together and uh, I'm ready to go. Let's get this, get this quilt together. So sandwiching a quilt, that's what we're doing. That basically means basting a quilt. <laughs> and what that means is you're putting your bottom layer, your back of the quilt, and then you're putting down your batting, which is the fluffy center, and then you're putting down your top. And you need to hold that together somehow. That's what basting is, holding uh, layers of fabric together. We are going to hold them together with pins, so we are there for pin basting. And uh, the term that quilters like to use once they have their three parts of the quilt all together, the back, the middle and the front, uh, it's it's called sandwiching because <laughs> you have your top and your middle. It's like a little sandwich. So that's what we're doing tonight. Uh, we need it sandwiched together before we quilt it, which is the act of sewing the three layers together. So oh, be careful when pinning. Don't push tone. Oh, don't scratch my floor. Oh, that's a good point. Well, there's tons of scratches on this floor. Uh, it came with scratches, so I don't think that'll be the end of the world. But yep. I'm on, I'm on the floor tonight. So, all right, guys, I'm going to tilt you down and we will get going. Oh, and if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every night for our relax and craft time at 9.30 p.m. Central. We are working through the hourglass block quilt. Uh, be sure to check out my previous videos. If you want to see the whole process, you can make this quilt from beginning to end uh, with me if you want. It's there on the couch. We'll be putting it together soon here. Uh, and I am going to be giving away this quilt. Uh, so if you want to sign up for the giveaway, look for the link in the post, the Facebook post here or on the YouTube post if you're watching the replay. So thanks again for popping in guys. I'm going to tilt you down and we will see the back of the quilt here. All right. I think that looks good. I'll be crawling on the floor all night. So here's the back of the quilt. I have put it, uh, I put it so the good side, the right side is to the floor. So the part that you want to see put towards the floor. So that means, uh, that means like your seam allowance is up here. That This is that seam allowance that we did. And what I'm going to do is we want this, I'm going to sit, not on my toes, but we want this taut on the floor. We don't want to stretch it out, but we do want it to lie flat, the back. And uh, so I'm going to take this painter's tape and I'm going to go around and then just put a few, I'm going to go on one side, then the other side, putting tape down and then uh, the other, the opposite two sides. And then I'll keep going around. I don't, I, I won't tape the whole thing, but I will get a good portion of it, of it down with the the blue tape. So that's where we're going to start. Thanks again, guys, for coming in tonight. I'm going to be attached to a long cord tonight, so hopefully that works. All right. So painter's tape. This is that nice tape that comes off easily when you're done. So I'm just taking that big chunk. Put one on this side. And remember, we made the back of this quilt larger than the front. So we do have a good three inches all the way around to work with. So don't worry about the tape being in the way. It is going to be just fine. So again, I don't want to pull it. Uh, I don't want to stretch it, but I do want it to be just, you know, nice and even. All right, we'll do this side. So I'm doing the four sides and then uh, then I will go around and finish it up. There, I want to get that wrinkle out in the middle. We'll do the one more side and then, then go around. I did press this too right before I came on tonight. 
There we go. This center looks good. So now we're just going to keep going with that painter's tape. Just kind of evening this all out. I may have to move the tape as I do it. But again, I just want all these kind of bubbles out of the back. All these wrinkles. But I'm not stretching the fabric per se either. Just getting it nice and flat. So thanks so much for joining me again, guys. I appreciate it. It's kind of fun having a little different setup tonight. All right, this one, I kind of have this little wrinkle in, so I'm going to just do this one again. There we go. That's a little bit better. See, it, it just comes off super easy, though. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. We're just getting it as good as we can. All right. So I started organizing my fabric today, and I'm super stoked about it. I woke up early today and went to Target and got some new plastic bins for, for the fabric, and that alone is a nice day. <laughs> Getting to buy new bins was fun. But I started organizing. I'm gonna put fat quarters all in one, and I have, uh, I have a whole pile of wool pieces that I've cut. I put all those in one, and I'll show you them on, uh, on Monday. Watching you while, oh, while the football game is on, on in overtime. Oh, funny. All right, I think that's plenty good. Let's do this last little, whoop, getting caught. Last little corner, and we'll be ready. I don't want all these little little pieces of dirt on the inside here. All right, two more pieces and we should be good to go. So if you have a really big table, a quilt this size, you could have probably done on the table. But I don't know, a floor works nice. It is just annoying that you're crawling around on the floor the whole time. But I don't know, that's what we do for, for quilting, huh? The life of a quilter is being on the floor. Okay, I think that works so good. So we got it pretty much flat. Here's the seam. That's that's kind of what the line that you're seeing here. Uh, so next, I have the batting. What does your other half do during these live streams? Oh, he is in his office. Oh, which is a, a bedroom inside the house here. So he's just like right over there working on the computer. <laughs> so all right, this is the batting I'm using. Uh, I'm showing you just. Uh, just because it's only it's the only thing that I had. I don't know much about batting. It's a low loft, which means it's uh, not big and poofy. It's really kind of skinny. This one's actually ultra thin, non bearding. It's a queen size because that's the only size I had. That's why it's huge. It's laying up over there. I'll show you how big it is. Uh, I'm gonna cut it down so it fits this a little bit better and so it's not a big problem for us. Uh, us older folks who can't get on the floor must use the table. Yes, I, that is the thing, Deborah. Um, there are some tricks to do this on the table. Uh, there's actually, I know there's a, a post going around on Facebook on how you can use pool noodles to, or a two by four is basically the same process that you can do this on the table. I've not tried that, but what you do is you basically roll I think the three layers on different pieces and then you gradually unroll kind of like, I don't know if you guys have seen a, a big um, long arm quilting machine, how all those pieces are kind of on rolls. It's kind of like that. Uh, one thing, if you are going to be on the floor, that would be really nice is knee pads. Oh, you sandwich on a wall. Irene, I've never heard of that before. Oh, I'm going to have to look into that. I, I kind of love that idea. That might be tough with like really large quilts, but a quilt this size to just tape it on the wall, that might be, uh, uh, that's pretty interesting. But again, this is, uh, yes, the floor is the best table ever. 
as long as our knees are okay. Yes, so again, uh, knee pads is not, you know, an unheard of idea for this. <laughs> so, all right, we're gonna keep going. We uh, have the back done right here. I don't need my tape anymore. Let's go grab the batting. I think my cord's just long enough for that. So again, this is from a queen size uh, cut. Uh, it comes on the roll and it comes, you know, in that little bag. Oh, I'm stuck. Hold on, guys. There we go. Okay, so you want the batting to go almost to the edge of your... Uh, your back. So you want to kind of be able to see the back. You want to just kind of see the edge there. And that'll be good. So I'm going to stretch this across. Again, remember our back is larger than what it needs to be. So you can see this uh, batting is quite a bit bigger. Puzzle, get out of there. So I'm trying to be a little gentle because I don't want it to rip up the, the backing, but up there looks pretty good. Let's just stretch out the bottom. So I did leave this to sit overnight. So some of the wrinkles are out, but you can see it's not completely out. That's gonna be fine. We'll quilt, those will get all, all, uh, push down when we quilt this together. All right, let's just pull this corner here. All right, we want this again, like the back, we want it as non-bubbly as possible. But again, I still kind of want to see that edge there. But I don't want to be so far in because I want to make sure that it, the front gets covered completely. Okay, I'm going to just hit this edge over here one more time, and then I think we'll be good. Uh, you know what? I'm going to wait till the end to cut this down. I could, I could go around and cut it out right now, but I can actually kind of see my fabric through it, so I can, I'll be able to tell if I've gone off the edge or not. And I think this will just save me a step by not cutting right now. But if you are working with a large piece, go ahead and trim it to the same size as the back. That's perfectly fine. All right, just trying to get this guy flat and the bulk out of my way. There's this little bubble down here that isn't playing nice. Man, even in this, with this little quilt, I kind of feel like my living room is not big enough. Again, just trying to get these little bubbles here and there out. I've heard of people using those. Oh yeah, the inner, oh, the interlocking foam things for the floor while they do this. Huh, I wonder how that works. Oh, you could use it for your, for your knees. That'd be good. All right, I got a little bubble there, but I think we're just gonna leave that. All right, so there we go. That's all I have to do for the batting. And now I'm gonna get the, the uh, top and we're gonna wanna center the top within the back. So I can see the edge here. I can kind of see through the edge or through the, through the batting over there. We're gonna set it right in the middle. And again, I've, I've pressed this. And make sure it's going the correct direction on your back. Like it, the long edge should go with the long edge of your back. So remember, we did about three inches extra on each side. And that's just because when we pin, we might stretch this out a little bit. And we want to have that leeway. We don't want to go right up against the edge. Because then we don't have that leeway. So. I think the edge is about right there. Again, we can just 
flatten this out a bit. On the knees. All right, and we have plenty of space all the way around, so we should be good right about there. So if there's any weird bubbles in here, I'm just kind of tugging on the batting to get rid of them. But I think we're good to go. So, all right, there is, there's the quilt. So what we're gonna do next is I have my basting pins. Now I like storing these, ooh, I'm totally tangled here. Okay, I like storing these with the, oh, you can see it so well tonight. I know, there's space to lay it out. That's, that's different, right? So they're kind of all in a jumbled mess, but that's okay. I like storing them. Uh, let me try and get one. I like storing them open like, uh, like this. So I like, these are the basting pins. Let's see if you can see. It's a safety pin. It's a safety pin with a little curve right in the center, a little bend in the center. I think they're called bent safety pins, actually. Not, not super creative, but bent, bent safety pins. And I store them open because uh, it sucks when you have to open every single one to uh, base the quilt. So I store them open. Uh, and uh, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in the center of the quilt. I'm gonna dump a few on here. Oh, that's a lot. I don't need all those probably. And I'm gonna just start from the center and work my way out. So we'll start just right here, I think. So the curve of the pin makes it easy to push down and come back up right away. And then I'm just, uh, I'm closing the safety pin at that point. And so you kind of want it, I don't know, maybe, maybe six inches apart or so, I don't know, I think going in the center of some of these squares will be plenty. And I'm kind of, I'm not stretching it out, but I am flattening it as I go from the center out. That's why I like starting from the center. So just down and up, and I, you can kind of feel that you're going through all the layers. And again, the whole, whole goal is to go through all three layers the back, the binding, and uh, the front. Or the, not the binding, the back, the batting. There we go. Let's grab some of these and go this way. Oh, thanks, Sharon. You like the colors. Yeah, it's fun to see all laid out now. You can see, you can really tell all the greens. I, I'm happy I went with that, that green background. You're always afraid of scratching your wood floor. Yeah, I guess I'm not, I guess I don't care. <laughs> Everything for the name of like crafting. So uh, this house is like dedicated to making stuff. So I guess I'm not too worried. Uh, this floor is pretty scratched up anyway. But yeah, I guess I don't quite know how you'd go about that. I mean, you wouldn't want to scratch your table though either if you're doing it on the table. I guess I'd rather scratch my floor than my table. So now in theory, if you know how you're gonna quilt it, and you know you're not gonna, you're gonna have like areas that aren't gonna be quilted, in theory, those would be good places for pins, because then you can leave the pins in while you quilt, but, uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm tackling that yet, so I'm just I'm just getting it down. But you can see I'm kind of stretching it out still. Uh, so it's good that we started from the middle, then I can keep going out, and then we'll have to make sure that those borders stretch out with us too. Get one in here. So it is super annoying to be on the floor like this, but this is one of my favorite parts of quilting. I think I talked about this a little bit last night. Uh, I like it because once we get this off the ground, it'll be like the first feel of a quilt. Like all the layers are together, you'll feel the weight of it. You can, uh, 
you can wrap it around you, it'll be, you know, toasty, it, it's all the lovely quiltiness of a quilt after this stage, and I really like that. I'm just kind of getting this center down, and then I'll, well, you know what, I'm just going to keep going into the border, never mind. I was thinking I'd do the center first, but then do the border, but I can, I can keep going, radiating out this way, and I think we'll be fine. Then I'll start radiating out the other way. All right, so that's pretty much down. Now let's address this border. Stretch that out a bit. Not stretch, but, you know, flatten it. Same thing, I'm just going into the border. Get one up here. Getting caught on things. All right, grab some more pins. Flatten it out. I'm intrigued by that, doing this on the wall. You'd have to be really tall, though, in some parts, I would think. It'd be kind of a fun, fun experiment. All right, let's get this, this side quick. Yeah, it looks like we can do some work on this edge. Oop, that's not even in there. So what I think I'm going to do for quilting, please don't scratch the beautiful floor. Oh, <laughs> it's a pretty scratched up floor. But yeah, I, I, I love this floor. This, this is a, this floor is original to the house, I think. So this is a 19, I think it was a 1946. And we actually found out that one of my friends from college, it was her grandma's house. And we didn't know that. <laughs> None of us knew that going in. And so that was just kind of a neat thing. So there's actual like pictures of her mom, uh, like in the uh, downstairs and all this fun stuff. So it's kind of neat that we know a little bit of the history of the house. But yeah, these are the wood floors from that time. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Oh, you know, one thing that we didn't do, uh, we kind of skipped a step. Sometimes, I mean, I guess usually what you want to do is you want to square up your quilt first. So before we, well, no, actually, we can do that afterwards, squaring up the quilt. Yeah, we'll do that later when we're done. Never mind. All right. Still working from the center here. From far away though, you can kind of see some of these uh, other squares that are popping up in the design. Probably a little bit better than up close. I think I need a pin up here yet. This is a good job to do uh, when you have uh, a nice TV show on and stuff too. You have your quilt craft room. Oh, torn apart. Oh, no. We'll go right here. So I have some little pins and some big pins. In theory, the bigger pins are good for a higher loft or a, or a thicker batting, but uh, I think they're easier to use. I like using the big ones. But I have both just because that's what they had at the store at the time. All right, let's get in the center again and start working the other way. But this, this uh, corner is pretty well done here. And I'll show you guys this up close when we're done so you can see see all the pins. Ah, back on the floor. 
some people like just going on their knees the whole time, but I, I prefer just kind of sitting as best I can. But yeah, I'd say this is the most awkward and uncomfortable part of the quilting process for sure. I'm still expanding from the center, smoothing it out from the center. Alright, we might actually need more of these pins. I thought I really dumped out a lot, but I think we're going to use them up. So I think for quilting, I'm, I was thinking I would go right straight through, like stitch in the ditch of these diagonals, but I'm also thinking that it's probably going to be, that's, it's probably super bulky in those seams. Like that might actually be rather difficult to stitch in the ditch on this one. Uh, stitch in the ditch, which just means st stitching along, uh, with like a sewing, a sewed seam. So I think I'm gonna echo, I think that's what it's called. I think I'm gonna echo the ditch. So I think I'm gonna do two that kind of echo the uh, center line and I'll go all the way into, into the border. So I'll have these like kind of neat crisscrosses going. I think that's my plan. Uh, we're gonna stitch it with that metallic thread, hopefully. And I'm gonna wanna do, on Monday, we'll do a test of that metallic thread. I thought I just grabbed a few, I guess not. All right, almost got this corner done. Just about. Oh, thanks, Nancy. What if you did about a quarter inch in from the seams? Yeah, so that's exactly what I'm thinking. Like a quarter inch away from the seams on either side. So there'll be like two, two uh, going along the seams like that. And I think I'm going to skip every other one. Uh, so I think I'm going to go through the center of, of these big squares because then I can get that fun crisscross going. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Oh, I could go. Yeah, I, I don't know. Something like that. But yeah, I think I am going to do like a quarter inch on the side from the seams. Just because, again, I, it's going to be, I think, too difficult to sew right in the seams. I think I'll break like 800 needles doing that and we'll just be really mad. So I think I think uh, sticking to the, to, the, to the sides of it a little bit will be good. I'm going to throw one more in here. I don't think I need it, but it's a little bubbly right there. Okay, we got, we're almost done here. We got a good two thirds done. Let's do this final from the center and then we gotta do this bottom edge, which is looking pretty bubbly right now. But this did quite uh, stretch out quite a bit and it's because of these triangles, I think, working with these uh, triangles that are super stretchy. But this is, I mean, it's looking so much flatter than it did before. Design on the fly, exactly, Marion. That's, this whole project has been design on the fly, uh, which I rarely, or maybe I do, but I don't know. I feel like I rarely do that. So it's, it, that's been fun, a fun experiment. Like, ah, let's see how big this is gonna make it. Or, okay, we want it bigger. Let's just make a bigger border. Or, you know, let's see what happens if we do this or that. And it's been kind of fun. Okay, so this uh, is a good example. So this one was really difficult to uh, put in and out. Uh, that means like there's either a little barb on the end, like the point isn't right or the point is dull. If you find one of those, just toss it. It is, it's gonna put a, like a bigger hole in your, in your uh, fabric and it's just gonna be annoying every time you pick it up. So just, just toss those ones. You'll be able to feel it. It won't. It won't want to go through your fabric. All right. Let's get some in here. And that just happens every once in a while. Those ones. 
Wow, this is getting so much flatter. That's exciting. Which means it'll be even bigger. But this is definitely a, like a decent lap size quilt, I think. It's not a huge lap size quilt, but it's it's a gently nice size lap quilt, I think. I just put your legs up and cover them up and still have your body covered <laughs> size. Okay, almost done here. All right, I'm gonna be in front of you guys now. Time to scooch again. All right, so I'm doing my final kind of pulling down from the, the center area. On a larger quilt that you might, I mean, you might gain quite a bit from uh, pushing it out from the center. So that's why you want your, your big enough border around the edge here, because if you're pulling it out, you know, you might get, you're getting, you're getting closer and closer to that outside border, that outside edge. I need more pins. Probably not that many. All right, but this is why I like having the pins open. You can just grab them right away. I don't have to be opening every single one of these. That'd be a nightmare. I'm stretch out this area. We're almost done. Just this whole bottom area. Good size for recliners. Exactly! Good size for recliners. This is a recliner size lap quilt. I like that. Recliner size. All right, get one in the corner here. Oh, here's another one. I can't push this one in at all. Garbage. All right, get one more in right here, I think. As we quilt, we'll just pull these out if they're in our way. All right, scooching down here. All right. Okay, can't stretch out that much. All right, again, we're kind of working on this border. I can feel a little bit of a, like a lump in the batting, so I'm just pulling on the batting a little bit. Stick a pin right in there. We are almost done, guys. Almost done sandwiching our quilt. The cancer quilts you made for hospital. Oh, our 48 by 60. Oh, yeah, we're really close to that. We are 48. What is ours? It'll be 48. It's a little, it's kind of a funny proportion, this one. It's it's a little uh, stumpy, I guess. It should, in theory, if we had another vertical strip or, or two, it would probably be more, like, you know, nicer proportions. So, yeah, we are, I think, 48 by 54. I think that's... I think that's what this is ending up being. So yeah, we're really close to that. A wheelchair quilt there. Oh, that's nice. Yep, this is a perfect size for that, for sure. All right, I'm a little stretched funny here. I'm going to redo this one. Redo a couple of them here. Well, we, it's a little bubbly right here in the quilt. So let's see what we can do for that. Maybe we can stretch it this way a little. Eh, I think that's the best it's gonna get. Oh man, there we go. All right. About two more pins and we'll be done here. And uh, next up, we will cut it out. 
off of the floor. Oh, actually, I'll, I'll pull some of this tape off and then we'll cut it out. Yeah, this isn't wanting to stay flat. I'm going to stretch it a hair and put a pin right here. We'll get another pin in here as well. One on the edge and one on the corner and we'll be ready. Okay, that is good. So I'm gonna put away the rest of my pins here. I'm gonna take a good look across the way. I don't think we have any hanging out. I don't wanna step on a pin. Nope, I think we're good. So we can take the tape off at this point. And we can also, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut around the entire edge. I'm probably gonna leave about this much. So you don't wanna cut right up to your front top. You wanna leave, you know, a couple inches, like two inches all the way around still. Uh, so down here, I think we have some extra. So I'm, going, I'm gonna trim this. Let's pull this blue tape off first though. Okay, so let's let's trim this side and now we get to trim off that excess batting as well. So again, just leaving a little edge around the side. You don't need too much. And this doesn't need to be perfect either. You're just getting it off the ground. All right, all this batting left over. A little bit of strip of green. All right, now we'll do this side and same thing. Let's get rid of that tape first. Yeah, floor is as scratched as it was before, so <laughs> not too worried. Trim this edge. I'm so excited. This is when it starts to feel like a quilt. I actually really like this size. I might do more quilts this size. It's a perfect little just for your lap quilt. All right, out of here, batting. And then just this one more side. I will definitely trim this down. This is kind of a lot here. All right. Nice to have a good sharp scissors for this too. Get rid of this tape so I don't cut through it. Whoop. Okay. And this edge I'm just gonna leave. So that is it. Let's take a look at it. This is where it feels like a quilt. So here we go. Front and back are together. So here you can see our pins going through all the layers. Now the whole thing is being held together. Here's the back. You can see all the pins. 
But there we go. It feels, looks like a real quilt at this point. It drapes like a quilt. It's uh, all, all good. Oh, you need to get, get a ruler to trim against? Uh, we're not, I mean, it, I'm not trimming it all that well yet. Before, before we put the binding on here, I'm going to flip you guys up a little bit. So I don't have to go on the ground again. There we go. Uh, before, before I put the binding on, I'm going to do a step where I sew this down and then I will cut it. I will cut it a little nicer with a, uh, with a, well, I'll probably use my scissors again, but at that point you could use a rotary sitter, rotary cutter to make it really nice and square. We'll square it up. Uh, but at this point it doesn't need to be, it can just be like a raw edge. It can be hanging out here. The edge doesn't have to be perfect for this, but there we go. It's a quilt. Let's wrap up. <laughs> oh, this is a good size quilt. Let's wrap, wrap it around this way. There, thank you. I like it. So here we are, guys. Uh, quilt's ready to go. Uh, I will get this um, ready to quilt. I, I'm going to maybe make a little practice square. I do have some of this green left over. So I think I'm going to take some of the batting and do a little square. And we'll practice the metallic floss. Oh, geez, I'm warm. I'll practice the metallic floss on that before we go ahead and quilt this. So that will be what we do on Monday. But we have a quilt. See, now once it gets to this stage, then you can let it sit for a while and use it as a quilt. You'd most likely, oh, end up cutting the quilt. Yeah, you do want to be careful uh, so you don't cut up the quilt. This is a, the stage where you want to make sure that you don't accidentally, you know, sew a corner tucked under once you start quilting. But here we go. All right, guys, that is it for tonight. Sandwiching the quilt together. Uh, so thanks again for joining me. I know it's kind of a goofy, goofy setup tonight, uh, but I'm excited to not be on the floor anymore. So <laughs> thanks again, guys. We will get quilting this on Monday. So I will get this up on YouTube tonight at Penguin and Fish Movies. And remember, I'm giving it away. So be sure to sign up to win it uh, if you'd like it in the... Uh, the link that I have in the description here. And if you want to make your own, I have all the videos from start to finish of when we made this. And you can check those out on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies as well. And have a great weekend, y'all. Um, I will catch you again on Monday. Good night. <laughs>